Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and put into confusion that say, Aha, aha. Let all those who seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such love of thy salvation say continually, God, you are magnificent. But I am poor and needy. So make haste unto me, O God, for thou art my help and my deliverance. O Lord, do not delay. This floral painting of the Eastern Star walked in nature's own view, and from her own sweetest material instructs us with eloquence more powerful than words. Flowers are sensibly attuned to the gloomy surroundings of death and lend to the departed one's appearance of things asleep or only in the grave. They are only sweet with counsel. They tell that the buried one They are the constant and living witness that there is a hope in future life that like themselves fade with their own decay. Yet, in the springtime, in the resurrection, return to life. And in the celestial garden, there are collected God's choicest creation. With those who die in the world shall blossom and flourish with the fragrance of supernatural grace. Therefore, let them always adorn with offering bloom on the grave, for that they for they are the heavenly appearance, and they tell the heavenly things. In the ceremony of the Lord, flowers bear an important part. They are the beautiful silent hymns in which we read of the Creator's love to us and suggest through their colors and fragrance that a matchless forms the brave lessons and women's graces of the five heroines of the Eastern Star. It is the purpose, therefore, that in this, our most solemn ceremonial, we should introduce our traditional flowers with their appropriate lessons. And I now call upon the immediate representatives of those heroines to remind us of the lessons they contain. Sister Ada, draw from these mute monitors of truth that portion of the floral star would suggest your particular duty and impart it to us in signification. Great to look into this phantom beyond this life. Happy home to my heart. This is a flower symbolizing the concept of eternal lessons of undying love. There are many who believe that the souls of our departed ones return us to heaven when they die. Sister Ruth, select a portion of the floral star to suggest your particular duty and impart its signification. I believe this comports 
to be voted to a successor in the manager of the peaceful record of those who seek your seat in the Lord. This yellow flower symbolizes this disinterested kindness, teaches the lesson of unending possession. We believe upon the highest authority that it is only that which we have given in the true spirit of charity that abides with us when earthly treasures pass away. Believing this, we lay our beloved ones in the grave, trusting them to the hands of him who will never forfeit the guardianship of our jewels. In the belief that true love is unending, I deposit this memento of our deliverance in the casket of our, of our departed sister. Sister Esther, select a portion of the floral stones as your particular duty and impart us this gift vision. I need you to support to the pure blood of the saints, which as a benefit of the spotless inheritance reserved for those who live in the place of the one ever living God. This white flower symbolizes truth and innocence, teaches the lessons of heart purity. Which once more admits the lie, the lily of the mountainside. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Believeth this the humble who will look up. The lowly will find hope, may, may hope for the unerring eye will protect them amidst the flower of his glory. And they shall not fail to realize this promise. Come ye blessed of my Father, and inherit the kingdom. In the belief that no word of God can be lost, I deposit this kingdom in reverence of our will of God and the casket of our departed sister. Sister Martha, select a portion of the floral star that suggests your duty and impart to us this gift vision. Teaching the lessons of repudiated sincerity. They whose souls have been touched with celestial fire can know no change. Coldness may woo them, coldness may woo them, but they cannot be alienated. Absence only increases their devotion to him who has won their hearts by his divine favor. As from the grave, oftentimes the sweetest flowers spring. Wish of death are born the richest fruits of evil. Ever sincere, an emblem of our faith, mortality. I deposit this emblem of in the casket. And Sister Electra, select a portion of the star to suggest your particular duty and part to us in this situation.
constructive on those questions. Love be thine and thine be only. Animating hearts that are pure and sincere will inherit the unfading beauty of which the Holy Spirit has spoken. In this belief, I deposit what remains of the world star next to the grave, or uh, next to the cast.
Will all but the family please stand? All but the family. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth, and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And those skin worms destroy this body. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. Whom I shall see for myself and mine eyes shall behold and not another we brought nothing into this world And it is certain that we can carry nothing out. The Lord give it. And the Lord taketh away. Bless it. Be the name of the Lord. Lord, make me to know mine end and the number of my days that I might be certified how long I have to live. Behold, Thou hast made my day as it were a span long, and mine age is even as nothing in respect of thee. For verily every man living is altogether vanity. For man walketh in a vain shadow and disquieteth himself in vain. He heapeth up riches and cannot tell who shall gather them. And now, Lord, what is my hope? Truly, my hope is even in thee. So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. 
you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We bless God for this day, for this family, and for the life of Joy Lynn Poindexter. Let, let me say that again. Bless God for this day, for this family, and for the life of Joy Lynn Poindexter. And we've come to celebrate two things. We've come to celebrate two things. We've come to celebrate joy. And we've come to celebrate the Lord that joy loved. Oh, y'all, y'all, y'all. Maybe I need to say it this way. We've, we've come to celebrate joy and we've come to celebrate Jesus. And isn't it a wonderful thing isn't it a wonderful thing that you can celebrate Jesus with joy? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There, there's, it's a wonderful thing that there is joy in Jesus. <laughs> and when you have Jesus, you have say to this family that you have our profound sympathy. I want to say to this daughter, I want to say this publicly, that you have been an extraordinary daughter to your mother. The many times that I spoke to her on almost every occasion, at some point in that conversation, she said, Nicole, I have to have that. Nicole will take care of that. Nicole has got that. And I know that caregiving is not easy. It is a ministry in and of itself. Um, but I have seen and we have seen what you have done and we celebrate you and your husband and we say that what you have done is marvelous in our sight. Let's celebrate this daughter. Amen. 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 And that is not to exclude or anyone else. But uh, the Bible says you can only testify to those things of which you have seen and heard. We're going to follow the order as it is printed with only necessary corrections. Should there be any, uh, sing, we'll stand together and sing the hymn of praise. What a friend we have in Jesus. Then the scripture readings uh, will follow that. Uh, Minister Gene Wilson will preside. The scripture reading, Old Testament, Reverend Lisa Monk, and the New Testament, uh, Minister Philip Frazier, and the prayer of comfort, uh, Pastor Earl T. Howerton, Jr., the Little Zion Baptist Church, King George, Virginia, and following uh, the prayer of comfort, Minister Wilson will come and lead us forward, and we would that you would give her your attention. Now, let me do this. It just occurred to me because we do have a number of persons who are here from, from other places, and you may have said whether uh, you took off uh, just for this time or whether you left 
someplace traveling here that you may have said to someone that uh, you needed to be away because you had to attend a funeral but I need to inform you that you're at 10th Street Baptist Church, 1000 R Street, Northwest Washington, D.C. We do a lot of things at 10th Street, but the one thing we don't do is have funerals. Because funerals are about dying, and we have come to celebrate life. So I encourage you, lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory... Amen. Let's stand together. What a friend. and griefs to bear what a privilege to care what are we going to carry Forfeit and all pains we bear. I can't hear y'all because we we just don't carry. going to do with it? Take it. Mm. Why it forsake us and he trouble anywhere. His arms, his arms, he'll take and she that will find a solace, will find a solace there.
Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. I will be reading the Old Testament. Psalms chapter 23 in its entirety. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou hast prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Surely, 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 goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. The Apostle Paul asked these questions, and he answered them in Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 35. Can anything ever separate us from Christ's love? Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry? or destitute, or in danger, or threatened with death? No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, neither death, nor life, neither angels, nor demons, nor neither our fears for today, nor our worries about tomorrow, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below, indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of God for the people of God. Be blessed. which we don't always understand nor comprehend. We still trust that you are sovereign. You sit high, you look low. God, on this morning, at this hour, we pray that you would give us the comfort and the strength that we need. More importantly, Father, we pray for this family that you would wrap your arms around them those moments what God when grief tends to get the best of them. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would do what you've been doing for ages. Comfort those who have lost those who are close to them. Then, Father, we pray that you would give us a sense of joy that we might celebrate her life to the degree, Lord God, that she would want us to. We thank you, Lord God, for the years that you have blessed her with, God all of the lives that she's touched, 
all the people that she has impacted and influenced. We thank you, God, for her memory. So we ask God for the duration of this celebration service, that you would allow us, God, to honor you, God, as we honor her memory. In such a way, Lord God, that if she is standing over the balconies of heaven, that she might be well pleased with our praise and our worship. God, we thank you for her life, God. We bless you, Lord God, for her family, her children, the grandchildren, God. Comfort and strengthen them, Lord God. Now, Father God, we commit the rest of this service into your hands. Have your way, God. And Father, if, my, if I might ask one small thing for those, Lord God, who have parked in suspect places, we ask God that when they return, their cars will still be there. God, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. To the family, I extend to you my heartfelt sympathy. And thank you for asking me to participate in this great celebration of life. As we've heard pastors say, we don't have funerals here at 10th Street. We have celebrations of life. And we come this morning to celebrate our great friend in the ministry, Minister Joy Pondexter. Minister Joy Pondexter has fought a good fight. She has finished her course. She's gone up to heaven to receive her crown. Amen. We thank God for the life of Minister Pondexter. And all that she has meant to us. So come on. At this moment, let's put our hands together and give God some praise for the life of Minister Joy Clay Pondexter. Thank you, Lord, for allowing her to be in our lives. Thank you, Lord God. Minister Pondexter would sit right over there with the tamarind in her hand. And she would shake her tambourine. And I would pat my foot. Praise God for the life of minister. Joy Clay Pondexter. Hey, great woman of God. I thank God for her. And the time that we have shared together. Praise God. At this time, we're going to hear from the Minister of Music, Reverend Rico White, after which we will have our reflections and acknowledgments from Sister Darlene Ford, our church clerk. We will also hear from Sister Sharon Orens, Brother Howard Johnson, Jr., Dr. Montague Kurt Ruth, Ruth, praise to God, the joyous children. Would you please come in that order?
divine now hear me while I pray and then take take all all of my guilt away Oh, let, let me from this day be holy thy. And then while, while dark, while the dark maze that I tread and then the griefs the griefs around around me spread Lord be Lord be my guide And then bid, bid darkness to turn to day. Wipe sorrows, tears away. No. Stray from the Scottish Rite Masons, 33rd and last degree of the World Incorporated, illustrious Edward J. Chapman, Senior, 33rd degree, most puissant sovereign grand commander, resolution of tribute. From the National Supreme Council, agent and accepted Scottish Rite Masons, his auxiliaries, and illustrious Edward J. Chapman, Senior, 33rd degree, we, the officers and members of the National Supreme Council, ancient and accepted Scottish Rite Masons, wish to submit this resolution of tribute to the family of Sister Joy L. Poindexter, a member of Rebecca Chapter Number no. 5, State of Maryland, and whereas our hearts are saddened by her passing, for we shall miss her kind-hearted disposition and words of wisdom and loyalty to this organization. The imprints of her service are left so deep, and whereas Sister Joy L. Poindexter was a faithful member of this organization, we hope that there is something that we can say or do to console this family during the time of grief. We feel the extent of your loss. We want you to know that we mourn with you and we shall miss our fraternal relationship with her. And whereas we, the followers of Christ, realize all too well that this is, well, that this is, is in dying, that we are born into eternal life. Yet we mourn, but not as though we have no hope. For we see the promise of the glorious life she has in, entered. Therefore, be it resolved that she who lived so unselfishly and sincerely did, as did our dearly de beloved departed sister, will touch our lives forever. You have our love and heartfelt sympathy. Be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution be given to the family 
and when placed in the archives of the National Supreme Council, done this 20th day of March in the Lord of our Savior, to 2024, respectfully submitted, illustrious Edward J. Chapman, 33rd senior degree, excuse me, most pursuant sovereign grand commander. Brother Reginald Clay, Nicole, and Andre Clay, Reverend Georgia, Clay Davis, and family. Death is but a of the fragile shell, David Wilkerson. The family of Metropolitan Church stands with you to celebrate the life of Minister Joy Poindexter. We hope that you feel the love, prayers, and support of our staff and our tremendous church family. Know that our prayers are with you. In this time of transition, I admonish you to pray. The gift of prayer is an unparalleled way of connecting us with God. Our God is a God who is all knowing and understanding. It's time like these when God hears, he yearns to hear from you. After all, God knows exactly how you feel. God too lost a loved one. You do remember that God had to sound silently eulogized his only begotten son by turning the lights out in heaven as his son died on a terrible death on Calvary. Because of this, God sympathizes with you and is mourning with you. I'm sure he loved your, I'm sure he loved to hear from you, excuse me. Metropolitan stands with you, though we may not know the deep and death of pain of your loss, we commend you to God, knowing that God is closer than the pain itself. Allow God's word to be a guide in this unfamiliar and unnerving season. We reflect on the value of time. Teach us to number our days so that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. Psalm 90, 12. We rely on the truth of the word. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear though the earth gives way. Though the mountains be moved, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. Psalm 46, 1 through 2b. On behalf of Lady Joy, the ministerial staff, doctors H.B. Beecher Hicks Jr. and Elizabeth Hicks, the Council of Servants, the Council of Elders, and the entire Metropolitan family, I extend to you our love and support, and I open door to we open our doors to you to share with us and me as your shepherd. Be encouraged, the Reverend Dr. George Lewis Parks Jr., Senior Servant. to the Clay, Foster, Poindexter, Bird, and Williams families. It is written, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Matthew 5, 4. The pastors and members of Little Zion Baptist Church were saddened to hear about sisters in Christ's transition. We are here today to show our love and support to Minister Joy's family. Whereas it has pleased the Almighty God to call from labor to reward his daughter, whom, he, whom we love and will miss dearly. Thus, with the calling of his tender voice, she has slipped away to a, pit, a place of peace and sweet rest. Minister Joy was a very special lady. She was always kind to everyone. With a big heart of love, a great conversationist, one who walked in true humility and love by putting her truth, her total faith and trust in her heavenly father. Yes, we give God the glory that even during this period of sickness, pain and suffering, she remains steadfast and immovable in her faith. We can rejoice in knowing that she is not that this is not the end of her story because the, her memory of her life and influence of her life remains. 
we say she departed, but God says that she has arrived. To the family, yes, you will miss her, but rejoice today, knowing that her living has not been in vain. Our steadfast prayers are ever with you, done by the order of Little Zion Baptist Church, Pastor Earl T. Howerton, Jr., Cherie Smith, Administrator. to the family of Minister Joy Poindexter. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and save those who are crushed in spirit. We, the members of the 10th Street Baptist Church School, share with you today in the home going of our beloved mother, of your beloved mother, our dear sister in the Lord. God knows the void and the pain you feel. He cares about you and will meet you right where you are. Our hearts are with you today. The psalmist says that the life that life is like a mountain railroad, where we where there are obstructions, storms of wind and rain, curves and trestles that will almost ditch your train. But put your trust alone in Jesus. He said, never falter, never fail. Keep your hand upon the throttle and your eye upon the rail. Minister Poindexter kept her eyes on Jesus. She knew that even in her flesh, her heart or even her spirit would grow weak and fail, that God would be with her and give her strength forever. Minister Poindexter was an assistant teacher to class number seven and class number two. She was a servant with a heart for teaching, even in her time of sickness and unable to attend. Yet she had a strong desire to be present in doing what God told her to do. But you know what, family and friends, soon and very soon, we will all be going to see the King. So we encourage you to, to walk worthy of the vocation wherewith you are called, for God is truly honored when we love him and are obedient to his word. Please know that our thoughts and prayers are with you, especially during this time of bereavement, and we pray that God will comfort and give you peace, as only he can do. Sincerely, the 10th Street Baptist Church School, Sister Linda, Linda Mangum, Correspondent Secretary, Reverend A. Michael Charles Durant, Pastor. I have called you by name, and you are mine. Isaiah 41.3 to the family of the late Minister Joy Poindexter, the pastor, diaconate, official staff, and members of the 10th Street Baptist Church were saddened to hear of your loved one's passing, and we extend to you our condolences, prayers, and sympathies. Joy united with 10th Street Baptist Church in June 2004. She was a member of the Sunday School and Midweek Bible of the class, Midweek Bible class. She completed the teacher certification course and ultimately became a Sunday school teacher. After receiving her call to the ministry in 2013, Joy preached her trial sermon and became Minister Joy. She was a true worshiper and loved to sing. Two things you could always count on no matter where she was. Joy had a Bible in one hand and a tambourine in the other. Joy loved her church and the people of God and had a deep, affectionate love for her pastor and first lady. She was a faithful member and will truly be missed. Family, we realize that words may seem empty to you as you are grieving the loss of your loved one, but praise be to God. Our hope is in Christ Jesus. During this season of sorrow, it is our prayer. That God will, that the God of all consolation will pursue you with his untiring and unmistakable love. As you and your family reminisce on the fond memories of your loved one, rest in the assurance that God's word never fails. And though you are grieving, he will show you compassion according to his greatness of his unfailing love. Lamentations 3, 31 and 32. Be encouraged and find consolation in knowing that God will be your comforter and catch every tear that you may shed during this time and that the Lord has promised to keep each one of you in his perfect peace. We 
pray that you will find comfort in these words and that God will grant you the peace that surpasses all understanding. Humbly and victoriously submitted by the 10th Street Baptist Church, Sister Darling W. Ford, Church Clerk, Sister Trustee Patricia Carey Brown, Chairman of Trustees, Deacon Rodney K. Black, Chairman of Deacons A. Michael Charles Durant, Pastor. visit a friend of mine at work and she was there talking to the friend and when I walked up the friend introduced us three of us chatted a few minutes and I noticed Joy kept staring at me with a smile this kind of smile but kind of stopped talking and thinking okay what is this a few seconds later she looks at me and she says you know Jesus don't you I said I absolutely do absolutely me and him go way back I got real excited I got real excited off of that one. And we talked a little bit further. A couple of days later, she called me, asked me, did I want to have lunch? I said, absolutely, I'm with you. From that day forward, Joy and I pretty much had lunch together every day. We did the training classes together at the office. We even extended our friendship to outside of the office. I had a niece. Joy had a granddaughter, Aja, that we used to take everywhere to go. I had a pool party at my house. Joy brought Aja. Three at Chuck E. Cheese. I hate Chuck E. Cheese and Kanye's sleep. But I went. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Those kids be in there stepping all over your feet, and you be wondering, where is your mother? But I went. We took them to a lot of places. Joy used to come over to my house just to say, oh, I'm coming over and I'm going to hang out with you. She'd come over and my husband would go out and wash Joy's car. When Joy got ready to leave, my husband would treat her like royalty. He'd go out, and Joy had that white Cadillac there. He'd go out, open up the door for her, and he'd say, Madam, how did I do? And she'd say, Brother, brother, thank you so much. We were sitting in the house giggling. We did. I, I can't even begin to say the love I had for her. At work, we decided we wanted to have a Bible study. So she and I went to management together because we wanted to do this right. We went to management together and asked, could we host a Bible study? Management said yes. We started letting everybody know what was going on. And for the most part, Joy did all the preaching, and I decided she needed to get a break. So I started seeking out other ministers in this firm just to give her a break so she didn't have to preach every time. From that point forward, Joy started calling me Alma Bear. My name ceased from sharing. It was Alma Bear. Oh my gosh. When she moved to Virginia, she told me, can you ask your husband to come spend a week here with me? And I said, ooh. So I went down, and Saturday night, Joy invited some of her friends to come over to meet me. And she introduced me as Mrs. Alma Bear. We had such a good time. My sister's ministry did a, a teaching for the women. My sister needed someone to teach one of the classes. I asked Joy and she immediately said yes. The day that Joy taught, oh my God, picture this. Joy comes in looking like she's the model on the boat, cover of boat. She was dressed to the nines, had her hair fixed, suit on her heels, and the ladies absolutely loved her teaching. She came to me one day and said she wanted to get her hair cut. Could I ask my hairdresser to do it? I made an appointment for the two of us to go. We get there. Joy loved her haircut, wanted to take pictures. This day, she didn't have on any jewelry. She looks at me. I'm a bear. Let me wear earrings. Took my earrings off. I gave them to her. We 
here goes that look again. Like, mm. I said, what is it? She said, I'm gonna need that necklace too. I took my necklace off, I handed it to her, she wore it. She came back the next day to my desk, showing off that haircut, with still wearing my necklace and earrings. It was a set of pearls, but I didn't care. I knew I wasn't gonna get it back because I gave it to my girl. I love joy, I love joy. I, I can, never, can never think of a time that if she wasn't talking about the goodness of the Lord, she was teaching about the goodness of the Lord. She taught me so many things. She even encouraged me at one of the Bible studies to preach, and I'm like, I am not a minister. I am definitely a mama bearer. But she worked with me, and I got up, and she said I made her proud, so that's all I needed to hear. I say to the family this morning, I can only imagine the hurt that you must be feeling because my struggle is real. But Joy was a beautiful person, and I know she left a lot of great, great memories with each one of you. Everybody that she touched, Joy left something. Even the people that from our old job that are not able to be here, they all asked me to extend their condolences, and everybody always said, oh, Joy was the pretty one with the pretty hair, wasn't she? I said, yeah, that was Joy. But I just say to you, I extend my deepest condolences to you. And thank you, Nicole, for asking me to speak a few words over my friend. I will never, never, ever forget the impact that she had on my life. Thank you for the opportunity to be able to tell my little piece of the story of Joy Point Dexter that I love dearly. Joy was very special. She loved me like a brother, loved me like a sister. She called me gravy. <laughs> I called her beaver duck. Hopefully I'll see her again. Uh, but Lord, give me about 20 more years. <laughs> I don't want it to be too soon. Yeah. Okay. I will never, ever forget her. You know, she'll always be in my heart. Good morning, everybody. So this is my first time in this church, and I can definitely see why she wanted her to leave her ball, to be able to wear high heels, put on a sexy dress, and an exorbitant hat to be here to praise with you guys every Sunday. So Nicole shared with me last week that we meet people at a time in our lives when we need each other the most. And my first phone call with Miss Joy was very rocky. So Nicole, thank you for your intervention because <laughs> it turned out to be divine intervention. I met her as a physical therapist, but every time I went to see her, she became my guidance counselor, <laughs> my spiritual advisor, and she started telling me, call me Mama Joy. I felt kind of bad culturally because my mom was still alive and she was still a patient, but I respected her. Now, I had to eventually make Miss Joy either my last patient or between the hours of 10 and two because my other patients didn't want to be seen between 10 and two because of deal or no deal, the price is right, the young and the restless or bold and beautiful. So she and I had almost two hours together 
we would go walking, we'd talk, and every time I opened the door, she would say, daughter, go get me my coat. So, <laughs> she was drawing. <laughs> I brought you your coat. Um, the tables turned a couple years ago when I went through a health crisis, and Miss Joy showed up in the most I didn't expect her to show up that way. She would come take me to doctor's appointments. Um, my mom came to help take care of me to recover. And those two became the best of friends. Uh, we had just lost my dad. And I was angry at the time and angry with God. So she mentioned to me that everybody's on borrowed time. And as my mom told her on Monday before she passed, I think Nicole said she was actually shedding tears. I didn't get to see it, but thank you for giving us some of the best days that we had in the short time we've known each other. I will miss you. Nicole, John, Sam, and Alex, you guys are family, and I'll still be in touch. I'll still be around. But welcome home, Miss Joy. The angels will be dancing with you. is here, but she'll be so, so happy to see everyone here. It's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. Um, for those who don't know, my name is Reg Clay Jr. I am um, the oldest child, um, and I promise it won't be too long, but um, it was a tough call to get, you know, that Monday. But, um, you know, we're here to celebrate her life, and uh, I think I can, I am, um, speaking on behalf of the family, but of course, you know, we can all talk if we want to. Um, many may not know, but uh, my biological mother was another woman, and um, mom, I never say step, she is mom, came to um, dad and my life at a time where it was, uh, it's okay, uh, very tough. Um, dad went through a horrible divorce and um, I was a young kid you know I was like maybe um, 10 or 12 years old and um, going through a lot of stuff but in any case mom came into our lives at the nick of time at the right time the time where we needed him her we needed um, love we needed joy you know, that was her name. And we start to build a family. Um, you know, um, a lot of times family isn't, um, you know, sometimes you have to put together the family that you want. It isn't necessarily the family that you're born into, but the family that you create. And so piece by piece, you know, we built our own little family and the four of us, you know, Shantice, um, Nicole, Andre, all of us, you know, were a family, and um, it was a wonderful thing. And we lived for um, on Sherman Avenue, and uh, it was rough. And Mom had um, she did the um, the Orange Hat Patrol to help out the community, and she even sit fed um, what she called um, chicken uh, dinners to the fellows that were on the streets. Because even before she entered the ministry. She felt love and she wanted to give and she wanted to heal. That has always been a part of her. And it's something that I think all of us kids, you know, have within us. You know, mom, joy is within all of us. And I'm so happy that she came into my life. I'm so happy that she came into our lives. And mom, you may be gone, but I hope that you're proud of us because all of us, every single one of us, 
and try to live life the way you wanted us to live. So once again, I thank each and every one of you for coming out and celebrating the life, not the death, but the life of a woman who was true to her name, Joy. Amen. Amen. And if you don't mind, uh, I want to listen. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Excuse me, brother. <laughs> Excuse me, brother. <laughs> but yes, I'm Shantice. I'm Joy's. If you were her firstborn, as Junior has told the story. And I didn't know what I wanted to say, but Pastor, give me a moment. But I think it's important as we celebrate her life. I felt like there was a testimony that I needed to go. Because all of you met her at a certain stage of her life. But me and my mother went way back. And I know her journey. And the fact, she's so, I mean, we are so proud of her. Because if you knew her, and she was a young mother to me. And over the years, something to be done to me, because we had to love from afar, because she didn't raise me. So sometimes there was friction, but over time, me and my mother became closer and my mother started calling and praying for me. She became that type of mother. So I think it's important because again, the mother that I started with is not the mother that I ended with. And it's just a testimony when they say, but God. And I know all of you, and you know, a lot of times, like Junior said, she blended our family. And as I hear stories today, and even as I hear my brother talk, you know, some of us, we often wonder why we didn't have closer relationships at different stages of her life. But then you learn to understand that God has a different purpose for you. So when you felt that maybe that relationship was taken away from you, but God's purpose was for her to pour into other people. So that's a beautiful mission. And as we stand today, through it all, she fought for us, this family. Right? And I just want to thank all of you for showing us your support. Some of you I've only met today, right? But what I do know is through those connections, if you were close to her, that she dearly, dearly loved you. Even if she would hang the phone up on you once in a while. She loves you. <laughs> Thank you. I am Reverend Georgia Davis, and I have been sister as well as a sister-in-law. Today you see them standing strong. If she could sing a song, she would say, may the life I live speak for me. May the work I do speak for me. When there's nothing more that can be said, know that God is with you. To the children, I know she would say, let your life live your life now so that God will be proud of you. To each and every one of you, give back what God has given you. Give love. Give love. I believe that life is a series of roads that you take. The road's never straight and narrow. It takes you down different paths, down some real sketchy side roads. Sometimes you end up in, you know, a ravine somewhere. Um, but you also meet a lot of people on that path. And with every person that you meet, it's an encounter that allows you to grow as a person, whether it's a good experience or a bad experience. And sometimes those roads end up being traveled more than once. 
as I look out at everybody right now, I see that my mom made a lot of different stocks. So many different stocks. And she visited with a lot of people and she grew as a person. My sister's right. The mother that she started with is not the lady that we ended with. And it caused a lot of pain and heartache to herself sometimes and other people, and yes, she was quick to hang up and block you for a little while. But that was mom. That was just who she was. And most importantly, regardless of how she felt in that moment, if she knew that you needed her, if she knew that you needed a word of praise or encouragement or just a hug or just for somebody to say, hey, baby girl, God loves you. My mom, our mom, was good for that. And I think that a lot of those qualities live on in us. I have a lot of people that I have you know, adopted over the years, taken in as family. Um, and my brother was right that she, you know, her thing was blending people together. And I know that the family's sitting on one side and friends are sitting elsewhere, but if she were to look out at all of these people, first of all, she'd be tickled pink about it. Um, but she would consider each and every one of you to be family. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank you all for being there for her and those various stops that she made on the path of life. Thank you for loving her. Thank you for giving her the support that she needed in that moment for that season. You may have only dealt with her for a little while or you may have dealt with her, you know, your whole life or her whole life, but you were there and she's grateful and so am I and so are we. So thank you, mom, I love you. Um, like Cousin Howie said, I'm going to see you, but, you know, no time soon. Praise the Lord. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for these great testimonies that we've heard this morning for the life of Minister Joy Pondexter. I would like to take this time to thank everyone that has participated in the program thus far. At this time, we're going to hear from our Minister of Music, Reverend Rico White, after which we will have our obituary read solemnly. And then the next voice that you hear will be our own pastor of the 10th Street Baptist Church, Reverend A.C. Durant. God bless you. Be not dismayed. Whatever, whatever be time. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love, of love, of love abide, God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day all along all the way He will take 
take care of you. God will take care. He's going to take care of you. No matter what, no matter what the test may be, God will take care of you. Lean weary one upon, lean upon Jesus' breast, and God will take care of you. God will take care of you through every day along life's way he will take care of you I'm going to tell you that God will the Lord will take care he's going to take care of you God will, he'll take care of you through every day, no matter what may come your way, he will take care of you, God will take care of you. The river, 
get it now but there's something between us and it be the again to this Celebrate the life of our sister. Not gonna be, not gonna be long. There is a dynamic, a different dynamic that exists between. Father in ministry and a son or daughter in ministry. Can't explain it, but there is an undeniable and inextricable connection. The sons and daughters in ministry, including a double header who is both my biological son and son in ministry. There is something different. So I want you to understand that stand here as Joy's pastor. Stand here to minister to this family. I want you to know that it's also very personal. Particularly with Joy because as someone said there was only one Joy. And 
she would call and text out back. Ring the text. An interesting thing this is. Uh, well, it's interesting to me, it's funny to me, it may not resonate with you at all. But during the pandemic, uh, I would stand here and preach to just the camp. Nobody in the room. Joy would text amens and encouragements in real time while I was preaching. Of course, I couldn't see it. And I said to her one time, I, I, you know, I, I, can't, I, can't, I can't see that. She said, yeah, but when it's over, you can go back and know that I was with you. <laughs> She called me Pastor Dad. And uh, I said, Joy, you Pastor Dad, but why Pastor Dad? She said, because I don't want you to ever forget either of them. She had wonderful spirit, and she did have a way of bringing. Together. Now, I'm not going to talk about it this, this morning, but just to be clear uh, that there was another side. And uh, there were there were a few times. The daughter, she had a kind of spirit that was infectious. And she loved worship. Oh, she loved to have church. Now, just just, just a couple of things that I want that I want to say. I'm grateful for all of these preachers who are here, those who are seated in congregation. I've seen a number of you. Bless you for being here. I'm sure she would be excited. Um, when she had her first bout and she came back, she was in service and she had a tambourine and she was blessed. It's wonderful. We just we glad that, that she's back. And she, she said to me, she said, I got one more thing. I said, what you come in? She said, I got one more thing. I said, what's that? She said, I gotta get my heels back. I want to celebrate this pastor. here who cared for and nurtured Joy while she was in King Joy. And she spoke to me highly of you. And she appreciated your ministry. And I, I know why Broad ministry wise. You've got to you gotta be a thinker. When you come to the city to remember you gotta pray for the people and the car. <laughs> Sister. I want to talk about the, the earring and the necklace. Just the joy and oil and uh, the 
are still. Church, you know. And I, you know, Joe came in the office with almost a job. I said, daughter, who are you annoying? And uh, she said, oh, Pastor Daddy, she proceeded to pour my oil into her job. And when it was all over, uh, well, let's just say more anointing left than was left. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Brother, I wasn't, I wasn't wanting to say this. I looked Brother Howard Johnson. And, uh, I've been traveling on the road a long time. I used to eat at your establishment. I've been looking for <laughs> looking, looking for you. And, uh, and I wasn't going to say anything because I wasn't sure that it was even you. Because just because of the name, you know, which, but then said she calls you gravy. I said, well, that's got to be. <laughs> got to be the same person. Again, to this family, we bless God for you and the code and God for you. There's a word. I'm not going to be wrong. But there's a word that I want us to lift Bless us in this moment. In the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings, chapter twenty four. Genesis chapter 24. I want to pick up in the middle of the unfolding of an encounter. But I think the words here fit. Genesis chapter 24. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 23 serve as the basis of our brief discussion. Genesis chapter 24 and verse 23. If you have your Bibles and you have it, say amen. And said, Who's Daughter, art thou? Tell me, I pray thee, is there room in thy father's house for us to lodge? That's what I want to talk about. Whose daughter are you, and is there room at your father's house? background of the story is 
who biblical scholars believe to be Eleazar is seeking for Abraham's son Isaac a bride. And he leaves Hebron and goes back to Mesopotamia to find a bride from among Abraham's people. You need to understand that folding of this story is both real and practical and figurative and indicative of a greater truth. Because I don't have a whole lot of time to unpack it, let me just give it to you in a succinct form. Abraham um, is the father of the faith. But in this story, he is a type of, or a representative of, or a symbol of the God of the universe. Isaac, who is his beloved son, is the progenitor of what will become the nation of Israel, but here he's a type of Christ, he represents him whom we call Jesus. He really always has, you remember it was Isaac who was to be the sacrifice. Eleazar is a type of the Holy Spirit. Because he's the intermediary and the intercessor. And it was, if you read the story, uh, the servant of Moses as the passage of, of, of Abraham, as the passage indicates, who gave gifts to Rebekah. And you do know that it is the Holy Spirit that imparts gifts. Rebecca is a type of the church. I know I'm right because you do understand that it was God who sent his son and it is the Holy Spirit that seals the relationship between Jesus and his bride, the church. So now let's look again. They arrive in Mesopotamia. He has 10 camels and some servants, and he decides to have them to kneel outside the city for, for watering and for resting. And he prays and asks God to let the one who he speaks to be the one that he has designated to be the bride for Isaac, who is a type of Christ. And he waits. And Rebecca shows up. Rebecca, the Bible says, was a, a very attractive woman. She went and she got a pitcher of water, and, and the servant asked, it, 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 Let me have a drink of your water, uh, ju just, a, just a little bit. And, and, and she said, all right, you can have some of my water. And she gave him the water, but, but then she said, and I'll draw water for your camels also until they've had enough. And you say, preacher, what does all of this have to do with any of this? I, I, I'll tell you what, he had prayed that God would not only let him know by sending someone, but by uh, her offering to not only give water to him, but to give water to the camels. And so he watched her. Because the first point that I want to share is that he was impressed by the nature of Rebecca. She, she, she was thoughtful and she was kind and she was willing to go out of her way to serve 
others. I, 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 I stopped by to tell you that, that that was the nature of joy. It, 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 it was her joy to do whatever she could for somebody else. She was always trying to find a way to help. Now, let's be honest. Sometimes in her trying to find a way to make a way, she'd get in the way. But, but help you out again. I, I'd rather have folk who get in the way, who are trying to do something, who, than folk who stay out of the way and never do a thing. She, she had, she had that kind of a personality, that kind of spirit that made an impression. But, but the Bible says he just watched for a minute and uh, tried to observe, but he was impressed, and joy was impressive. Now, but if you were in a room with joy, you were not going to be in that room with joy and not know. Joy. Now, 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 you know, I like to, you know, I like to be incognito. I mean, incognito. Let's go someplace and just, you know, be there and, and then and then leave. Joy did not just enter a room. Joy come and did the room. But in a strange and unusual way, when she did that, she then did not make it about her, but about her ability to help and to serve and to meet the needs and to get to know other folk in impression. But then he speaks directly to her again. He asks a question, and I'm, I'm almost done with, with these questions in my discussion. He, he asks her, whose daughter are you? Whose daughter are you? It's a question that has to do with identity. Because my brothers and sisters, as I was on a mission, the truth of the matter is, is that, that when <laughs> you're on a mission for the Lord and you are going to engage others in that mission, you need folk who know who they are and know what their relationship is. <laughs> Whose daughter are you? What's your identity? It's, 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 it's important to know uh, my brothers and, and, and my sisters, it, 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 it's important to know your identity. And I know that we draw our identity from, from different things, what school we went to and where we work and what family we're a part of and all of that. But, but the truth of the matter is, is your identity is ultimately determined by your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Your, your identity is caught up in what is your spiritual reality. He asked about her identity because, you see, when he came to Mesopotamia to get a wife 
for his son Isaac. He needed to get her from the family that was related to Abraham. Y'all not seeing how all of this weaves together. He couldn't get somebody that was not related because then they would have been a foreign. My brothers and sisters, all now are we the sons of God and it does not yet appear what we shall be. He needed to get somebody who was related to Abraham he needed to get somebody who knew their identity I came to ask you do you know who you are the reason I want to ask you that is because joy knew who she was she knew what she'd been she knew what she'd been through she knew where she was and she knew who she was she knew she was a child of God she knew that she had a relationship with the king she knew we talked on the phone a few weeks ago she talked about this relapse and the stuff that was going on and what they had found and she told me that she had a day coming up where it was all day nothing but text but she said pastor dad I'm not worried about it I don't know how it's going to turn out she said but I want you to know that whatever happens the devil can't win so the devil can't win so if he wanted to win he needed to have gotten me before I got Jesus. If he wanted to win, he needed to get me back then. But, but now it does not matter. To live is Christ. To die is gain. I need to ask, do you know who and what your identity is? We asked her a question based on the fact that she'd impressed me. Asked a question to determine identity. Then Philippi asked her another question, and I'm done. Whose daughter are you? But then he asked, is there room in your father's house? For us, it's your daddy's house, so I'm sure there's room for you. But is there room for the rest of us? It's a question about inheritance because. In these days of antiquity, it was understood what the father had, the children had also. So he asked her just to make sure this thing was what he thought it was, just to make sure that this is how the Lord was unfolding it. He didn't just ask, who's your daddy, and left it there. He asked, whose daughter are you, and is there room in your father's house? Because if there's not room in your father's house, you aren't the right one. I stopped by to tell you that Joy was impressive, and Joy knew her identity, and Joy had an inheritance because she knew that there was room in her father's house and since 2014 she spent her time in ministry standing here and teaching classes and going here the yonder and your and all of that was just to tell somebody there's room in my father's house from place to place from day to day on a cane weak sometimes but always Telling somebody there's room, there's room, there's room in my father's house, and I, 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 I can hear her, and I heard Nicole say, and I heard another say. We want to see again, but not necessarily right now. But I still hear joy saying, come on and go with me to my father's house. 
come on and go with me to my father's house there's love there's peace there's happiness there's joy in my father's house yeah 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 hallelujah yes i know i know i know it's a homegoing service but just go on and lift your hands let's have church like like joy was in the body in this room and just lift your hands and say yeah yeah ah! The door's open. The door's open. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Will y'all, will you, will you, will you, will you, will you, will you, will you help me? Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, come on and go with me. To The door's open. The door's open. If you're here and you're without a relationship with Jesus Christ, it's a wonderful thing to celebrate joy being in her father's house. But you ought to come on. You ought to come on. Bless your heart. Lord still calls. Mm -hmm. Oh, and so you say, but preacher. Is this an appropriate time? There's no better time. There's no better day. There's no better place than right now. Does the spirit control? Have peace 
and sweet rest as you yield him your body and soul hey. on the altar of Does the spirit Somebody give me one of the mics. Somebody give me one of the mics. Give me a hot mic. 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 Hey, 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 hey. you to give me a moment <laughs> sister angel jones is coming watch care she's come also requesting prayer prayer is always in order if joy was here she'd have come and did my oil God, in the perfect name of Jesus, come before you now in this hour. We pray for our sister. We pray that you would, in whatever way is needed, that you would move, that you would show yourself strong. We rebuke the enemy, his devices and deceptions. We pray that you would strengthen her in the inner man. Cause your spirit to control her life. Those difficult things, difficult people, we pray that you would move them and that you would get the glory. We praise you now for victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people put their blessed hands together. Bless the name of the Lord.
Hallelujah. Deacon Dibbs and our March Club team will have spiritual oversight. Bless God for you. And I'm only doing it because Joy, we, we talked in the hospital. She was trying to talk and give instruction. I'm trying to direct the conversation in another way. You know, but she's talking about this, this service and all of and all of and 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 I don't know, we can talk about that later. She said, Well, we can talk about it later, but I won't talk about it now. Though the storms keep on raging in my life And sometimes it's hard Still the hope that lies within is reassured As I keep my eyes upon the distant shore I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared but if the storms don't see And if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been hurricaned in the I realize in this life we're going to be tossed by the winds and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I've got an anchor. <laughs> And it keeps me steadfast and unmovable despite the test. So if the storms don't cease, and if the winds keep on blowing in my life, my soul has been hurricaned in. Let's all stand. My soul has been anchored. 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 So dark the nights, clouds in the sky. I know it's all right because Jesus is nigh. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. My soul's been anchored. For as much as it has pleased Almighty God to take out of this world the soul of our deceased sister, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. Looking for the general resurrection and life in the world to come through our Lord Jesus, at whose second coming in glorious majesty to judge the world, the earth and the sea shall give up their dead 
and the corruptible bodies of them that sleep in him shall be changed and made like unto his own glorious body, whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. I'm going to ask five, six of our brothers will come, stand here on my left to serve as pallbearers, and then I'm going to ask that we need eight eight of our sisters to come and serve as floral bears. Thank you so much. Hallelujah, bye-bye. 